Candlestick patterns alone are in no way some type of holy grail when it comes to trading. But what they can provide is a consistent and accurate way to enter trades. So with that being the case, what I want to do today is share with you one of my favorite candlestick patterns. This is one of the patterns that I will use to actually press the buy or sell button. Whenever I see this pattern, I know it's time for me to enter a trade. So what I'm going to do first is show you a live trade I'm in on the Canada Yen using this candlestick pattern. Then we'll go over the rules for the candlestick pattern itself. We'll take a look at a few strategy ideas that you can use with this candlestick pattern and a few other tips and tricks so that by the end of this video you will have one of the accurate and rules-based candlestick pattern formations that I personally use to enter trades so if that sounds good go ahead and click that like button for me go ahead and subscribe if you are new and I'll see you after the intro and disclaimer All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is a live trade I'm in right now on the Canada Yen. As you can see, this trade is currently up about $1,096 and it is in fact on a live account. You can see that right here. This is an account we started about three months ago with around $20,000 and it's up to 26 grand using the strategy and candlestick pattern combination you're gonna learn about in today's video. So let's go ahead and take a look at this trade. As you can see, prices of the Canada Yen were pushing lower. That's very obvious to see. We have new lower lows coming into the picture along with new lower highs as well. This high went a little bit above, but I would call this an equal high. Even though that's the case, we have prices coming down, breaking below this low, putting us back into that confirmed downtrend and then waiting for a pullback and this specific candlestick formation you're going to learn right now. And since then, prices have consolidated a bit and then we have this massive drop that's recently happened here on the Canada Yen. Now that you've seen our live trade using this, and we'll take another look at this a little later in the video, but right now what I want to do is go up to a whiteboard and teach you the candlestick pattern itself and all of the rules associated with it. This candlestick pattern formation will be one of the most simple candlestick patterns you have ever learned, but do not knock it for being simple. The reason this candlestick pattern works so well is one, it gives you a consistent set of rules you can follow while trading when it comes to why you actually press that buy or sell button to enter a trade. And two, it is an extremely logical pattern that shows you buying or selling pressure by looking for what is called close above and below candlestick patterns. So as you can see, we have a couple of examples here on the chart. The first thing we'll take a look at is a bullish example of this pattern. This pattern consists of nothing more than the close above a previous high of a previous candle. So if we have something like a downtrend happening and then we get a candlestick followed by a bullish candlestick that closes above the high of that candlestick, this is a clear logical sign that we have buying pressure that is irrefutable. We have buying pressure if buyers have pushed this market up high enough to close above the high of the previous candle. Now, of course, this is not all we look for and this candlestick pattern in no way is a holy grail, but again, gives us a logical and consistent way to see buying and selling pressure. Now for a bullish example of this, the previous candle can be red or can be green. It is irrelevant. If it's green, this would look a little more like so. We would have the open of the candle being there at the top of the candle, but irregardless, we would still need to see that this candle closes above the high of our previous candle. As long as we have that in some way, shape or form, in some fashion, then we have a bullish close above candle. Let's go ahead and take a look at the bearish example of this. It should be really simple. We're just flipping it upside down. For a bearish example of this, you may see something like an uptrend and a clear sign that this uptrend could possibly be coming to an end would be a swing high followed by a close below the previous low of that candle. So this candle followed by a close, the bottom of our body, the close of a red candle that's below the low of this candle would be the bearish close below candle. Now, just as with the bullish formation, this candle could also be red. So if that was the case, it would look a little more like this, and then we would have our red candle opening at the bottom of that. And as long as in some way, shape or form, or in some fashion, we have the close of a candle below the low of its previous 
candle, that is a sign of selling pressure. And with these rules in place, it's also a consistent way to enter the market in a selling or buying situation. Now, there are a few nuances that actually make this into an accurate way to trade. And I'm going to discuss those with you as we go down and look at the Canada yen trade right now. So the first nuance to this full strategy and how I use this candlestick pattern formation is I really like to use this formation in trending markets. What I mean by that, and I'm going to give you the full rules for this, is that I want to see if I'm looking for a bearish trade like we have on the chart, prices making new lows. And not only that, I'm actually trying to capture the top of the pullback. I want to capture the very top of the pullback being literally the candle that makes the swing high of the pullback. So what I mean by that is here, we have prices pushing down. We have our first condition met. We're making new lows. That's perfectly fine. Well, what I want to capture as we create this pullback is I want the candle I enter on to either be the swing high and then also be a close below candle like this or to be directly after the swing high and be a close below candle like this. Either one of those is completely fine. Pretend this wick isn't higher than this one at the moment, but either one of those would be completely fine. For a bearish trade, it needs to either be the swing high of the pullback or directly follow the swing high of the pullback. Let's see what we get here on the Canada Yen. If we press forward once, you can see that this candle right here is in fact the swing high of the pullback from the previous lowest swing low. So we have our new swing low. As we get this pullback, we want our close below candle to either be the swing high or directly follow the swing high of the pullback for a bearish trade. This is something I've seen to provide a lot of accuracy using this candlestick pattern formation. And in this case, it provided a lot of accuracy here on this trade. And this is also a trade that I did send out to all members of the TTC Forex University. I will put a screenshot of that email analysis to the left side of your screen. If you're interested in learning the details of the university, you can go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com or click the top link in the description. If not, that's completely fine. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this trade has played out so far, which you already know because you've already seen it. But as you can see, we played around and consolidated a decent amount here around our entry before finally that big fall that we've seen here on the Canada Yen recently. So this trade not only is a good example of the bearish criteria met for a close below candlestick pattern formation, but also a good example of the nuance rule being that my entry needs to be the top of the pullback in a bearish trade. Let's now go take a look at an example of a bullish trade of using this candlestick pattern formation. On the chart right now, which direction is price trending? Should be pretty easy to tell that at the moment we are in an uptrend due to the fact that we've had a high fall by a higher low, higher high, higher low down here, back up to what is now a new higher high. What are we in the middle of right now at where price is sitting? This is the middle of a pullback. Remember, the rules for this candlestick pattern entry, we're looking for a bullish version, which means a close above, but we also need either that candle to be the swing low of the pullback, meaning I'll zoom in to make this easier to see as we're pulling back, we would want our close below candle, excuse me, our close above candle to be right after the swing low, which would be a close above of this candle or to be the swing low itself. So right now, that's what we're waiting on in this specific situation. Let's go ahead and move the market forward just a bit. Do we get that here? No, we just get a new swing low. So now we have a swing low candle, but this candle did not close above the previous candle. Therefore, we don't have a valid pattern, do we? No, we do not. Let's go ahead and move the market forward once more. And now what do you notice? Would this be a valid close above candle? Hopefully you said yes, although this candle is green, it is in fact the swing low of the pullback and the very next candle after that swing low is a close above candle. So this is exactly what I'd be looking for in the case of a bullish close above candle because the nuance rule being I need this candle, the close above to happen at or right after the swing low. So when I say at the swing low, this is what that would look like. That would mean that the close above candle itself, I'm trying to draw that as straight as I can, the close above candle itself was the swing low of the pullback. 
And right after the swing low of the pullback, exactly as it sounds, would be the close above right after the swing low of this pullback in our uptrend. Now, what this trading opportunity gives me the chance to do is also map out what a full strategy would look like when using this type of candlestick pattern. I'm not going to go over every single detail of a full strategy in this video because unfortunately, it would get extremely long if I did so. So what I'll do is just give you an example of what I would be using in order to create a strategy with this. And that way you'll have the tools to go out and create your own strategy with close above and close below candles as well. So right now, things that you can add to this are things like different conditions. You already have your entry actual entry reason, and then you want to add stops and targets as well. So if you've never been a part of the channel, you may not have heard this, but a lot of you have heard of CEST. CEST stands for just that. That stands for conditions, meaning are we looking for price to be in an uptrend? Are we looking for price to come back to a level of structure? Are we looking for areas of value, indicators being oversold, overbought and oversold? Are we looking for breakouts? And then we're going to be looking at entries after all of those conditions are met. So we have a certain amount of conditions followed by the actual entry, which is, hey, why am I pressing the button? Why am I pressing buy? Is it because of a candlestick pattern like we're talking about here? Well, in this case, yes, it is. The entry in this case being that close above candle. And we'll go over just examples of stops and targets. As I said, I'm not getting into full detail in this video because it's already quite long. But with this being the case, there are two things here that I want you to see if you can spot. If you're brand new, don't worry if you can't, but if you've been a part of the channel for a while, you can probably spot some areas of value looking at the chart. By the way, the red line you see is the 20 EMA. So if you've watched any of our videos on moving averages, then you know that the 20 EMA can act as an area of value for currency pairs. It can act as a level of support and as a level of resistance in specific situations. And when you combine that with something else like structure, as in the previous level of resistance that was just broken by price, which is now likely to become support. When you combine those factors together, you end up with the confluence you need for a candlestick pattern to become accurate, to become a profitable strategy, to become something that can give you an edge over the market. And that's exactly what we're looking for. So in this case, the way I would build out this strategy would be something like, I'm waiting for a price to create a new high. I wanna see a pullback that comes to an area of value that is the 20 EMA. And I want that 20 EMA to also line up with the previous level of resistance that was broken. So that would be the outline of conditions. Then my entry would look something like a close above candle with the criteria we've talked about. One being that the close above candle needs to follow or be the swing low of the pullback. And two being that we need to see that close above candle. I think I said close below just now. Sorry, disregard that. But with this being the case, I would go ahead and that close above candle would actually be my entry. Meaning the close of that candle is when I would place the buy order as a market order. So at that point, placing the order, my stop loss would go somewhere below the swing low. I normally like to get at least a 1.4 to 1. And what happens with some of these trades is I'll move my stop loss to break even at a 1.4. You'll see that on the Canada Yen when we take a look at that again. And then I let my position ride and see if I can get some more profit out of the trade. But in this case, let's go ahead and click play on this specific example. As I said, stops and targets would just be below the previous swing low. And as long as you have something above a one to one, these types of strategies tend to be profitable because most of the time, these types of strategies are going to not be holy grails. They're not gonna win 80% of the time, but you can normally get something like a 55% win rate. So if you can have a 55% win rate and a bit over a one to one reward risk ratio over a large sample size of trades, you're going to be profitable with whatever strategy that is. That's just the way the math plays out, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at how this trade played out. If I click play, you'll see that it did in fact push up higher. And of course, this will not always happen. There are losses and wins with every single strategy. But what I want to do right now is actually take you back over to the Canada Yen. Here we are back on the Canada Yen and we're actually hitting my trailing stop right now. That's that black line you see on the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and exit this position with about a $940 profit here at 
that trailing stop. I'll explain a little more about that in just a second, but I want to show you my reasoning for entering this trade here on the Canada yen as well. So as you can see, this same 20 EMA came into play here on this trade. We have prices pushing down. Obviously, we're in a downtrend. So if we're going with our conditions, we have a downtrend check. We have our new lows. We have our pullback. We have one area of value, which is what? This 20 EMA. Now, if you'll notice, we're not quite back at this previous area of structure. So what was my second area of value? Because when trading like this, I like to have two areas of value showing me that prices could continue to fall before I even look for a candlestick pattern. So in this case, the second area of value is something I don't use often, but something that tends to work really well on the Canada yen and especially when we have really smooth impulse moves. So an impulse move is just a move that broke the previous low. And when that impulse move is really smooth, meaning it doesn't have a lot of pullbacks in through here like this, then I will actually use Fibonacci's from time to time. And in this case, we had price coming up to the 38.2% retracement on our Fibonacci along with being right there at that 20 EMA. So in terms of conditions, we have downtrend at the 20 EMA I know can provide resistance and also we're at the 38.2% retracement, which I know can provide resistance for this market. So with all those things coming together, I decided to go ahead and place a trade once we got our entry. So conditions met, entry, swing high, close below candle, this red one right here. After that, it just came down to stops and targets, and I applied those appropriately based on my own trading plan. Now let's go into some more detail on stops and targets. So when it comes to stop losses, I just try to get them into a place that makes sense. So for a strategy like this, that would be above the swing high. And considering that our candlestick pattern is either the swing high or happens right after it, that makes stop losses really simple. Just give yourself a little bit of room above that swing high. And the reason for this is, as I said earlier, for these types of trades, obviously this is for a bearish version of the strategy. When prices are trending lower, I'm trying to capture the top of a pullback and then that big move down. So if we see something more like this, and then a push up that hits our stop loss, then I miss the top of the pullback. Even if we see something like this, and then something like this, then I didn't capture the top of the pullback correctly. And in that case, I wanna be out of the trade as fast as possible. So anywhere above that swing high, again, giving myself a little bit of room, is going to be fine for me in terms of a stop loss. In terms of targets, what I always suggest beginners do is stick to what are called fixed targets. Fixed targets would be like a one on your stop loss, right? And a 1.4 to one times that for your risk or a two to one reward to risk ratio. Something that is fixed and not a trailing stop like what I just showed you here on the Canada Yen. And the reason for this is because fixed targets are obviously much more simple and easier for beginners and struggling traders to grasp, not just from a physical standpoint. From a physical standpoint, a trailing stop is really simple. You just create a rule that tells you when you move your stop loss from your stop loss down to break even. So you create a rule for that. And I'll share my rules with you anyway, but I don't suggest this for beginners. And after you have a rule for that, you just create a rule for when you move your stop loss down as price goes lower or higher and you get into more money and you start making more profit. You create a rule for those two things and you just abide by those rules. That's as simple as trailing stops are from a physical standpoint. But the really difficult part about using trailing stops is the emotions. If you're not dialed in on your, your trading psychology, you're not going to be able to use trailing stops effectively. To give you an example of this, beginners tend to make the awful mistake of marrying a trade that should only be a one night stand. Let me explain what I mean by that. I don't know if you've ever been in a relationship where you get into the relationship and then you stay in the relationship even though you're seeing things that you don't like about the other person. You stay in the relationship even longer until eventually you just don't like the other person, but you're so invested that you stay in the relationship anyway. And eventually when you've had all you can take, you end up breaking up with that person, right? So that would be an example of almost marrying a trade that should only be a one night stand. And what I mean by that is what you just saw me do here, taking profits out on the Canada Yen would be really hard for most beginners because instead of sticking to their rules for their trailing stop, they would get hit with a bunch of emotions like FOMO, fear of missing out. Man, what if I take off my stop loss, my whole position, I take it all off here, I make the $930, whatever that was, and then price just heads lower. That would be FOMO. And they'll keep themselves from 
taking their position off because of that FOMO. So therefore, they're breaking their rules. And if you do that enough times, eventually you'll get hit by the marrying the trade that should have only been a one night stand. So that's something that you absolutely want to avoid as a beginner. But just to give you my rules that I use for this trailing stop situation, the rules I use here on the Canada Yen, what I looked at as a 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio. And at that point, whenever I get there, right, there's a 1.4. At the 1.4 to 1 reward to risk ratio area, which wasn't hit until way over here. But once it was hit, once I saw that candle, hit it right over here, I moved my stop loss to break even to ensure that I wasn't gonna lose any more money. And then after I get to a three to one, which was somewhere around right there in that area, I just moved my stop loss down to just above the previous candle high. And I only do the previous low. This is gonna kind of be confusing, especially for beginners, but the candle that I'm looking at is the low, and then I'm moving right above this high. So this candle, I wouldn't actually move down to here, but when I get a new low, then I'm moving just above the high of that new low. As I said, that's a lot more complicated than I normally like to get into here on YouTube, but I wanted to give you an idea of how I use things like trailing stops and how I actually trail the stop here on this Canada yen trade. And as I said, I would actually just suggest any new or struggling traders stick to a fixed reward to risk ratio, whatever type of reward to risk ratio you would like. Speaking of reward to risk ratio, a big problem I see most traders have with reward to risk ratio is just seeing it as a number. For example, if you had something like a four to one and four being your reward, one being your risk, that would be a pretty nice reward to risk ratio, right? And that sounds great. But just seeing this as two numbers is the wrong way to look at it. You need to look at it from a logical standpoint and ask yourself the question of, am I willing to risk blank to make blank? Let me explain. If I have a four to one reward risk ratio, let's say right here is that four to one, and my one is $100. So I have a $100 stop loss. What would that mean? That would mean I would have a four hundred dollar reward, right? The question I would need to ask myself before placing this trade is based on this specific trading opportunity. Do I believe in it so much that I'm willing to risk and or possibly lose $100 for the possibility of making $400? Now, while a four to one reward risk ratio sounds great, if you lose nine out of 10 trades or only win one out of 10 trades, you're going to blow your account, even with a four to one reward to risk ratio. So the problem is that we're missing a piece and we're missing a variable of this equation. That variable is something called win rate. So we're missing the win rate. And what's really cool about the C E S T that you learned today is that this creates the C E S T creates rules based strategies. And what this means is that we can take this set of rules and we can do something that can help us to predict with a certain degree of accuracy, what our win rate will be. Now, of course, there's nothing set in stone in trading, but back testing is a way that we can predict this win rate with a certain degree of accuracy. So what we can do is take these rules, this strategy we've created with CEST, we can look back through historic data over a large sample size, and that can show us what the likely future will hold based on this specific set of rules and the specific strategy. So let's say we come away with something that's 40% accurate and gives this four to one reward risk ratio, now we're making a much more intelligent trading decision because we took the opportunity to go back test and figure out the statistics of our strategy and figure out this predictable win rate. And we do all that through the process of back testing rules-based strategies. So if all of that sounds good and you'd like to learn more and invest in your future as a trader, then we would love to have you aboard in the TTC Forex University. This is a full university style course that will teach you everything I've learned in the past decade of my own trading experience in a step-by-step -step and organized way. So if you would like to find out all the details about the university, you can go to www.ttcfxuniversity.com. It'll also be the top link in the description. 
The university also includes email analysis like the one you saw that I sent out on the Canada Yen to all university members. Of course, all of them don't win. We have plenty of losses. I'm only about 55% accurate on my email analysis this year. So understand that before moving forward. But we do send out email analysis throughout the week on trades that I'm actually placing. On top of that, you'll also be receiving the Pro Trader Report. This is an email that I send you each Monday talking about the levels of structure I'm paying attention to for possible trades. And on top of all of that, you can also get email coaching support if you decide to join us in the TTC Forex University. Now, this means that any trading related questions you have will be answered by me personally to ensure you have a smooth journey inside of the TTC Forex University. So again, if that sounds good, all you got to do is go to www.ttc fxuniversity.com or click the top link in the description. If not, that is completely fine too. Just make sure you click that like button if you made it to the end and enjoyed the video. Make sure to comment below if you made it to the end and go ahead and subscribe if you're new and haven't done so yet. Click that notification bell too. Merry Christmas if I don't see you before then and I'll talk to you in the next video. See you soon.